homes are becoming more challenging, more concerning, the more efficient they get. And I know what you're probably thinking right out the gate. And that's, well, Josh, isn't more efficient the home a good thing? I would say yes, but it has its own set of challenges. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give you five things that I think that you should be very concerned about, things that you should be monitoring, especially the newer your house is. The newer your house, the more you should be watching these five things. There are things that we are learning that folks should be monitoring or heating and air guys or other trades, all these different things that guys are looking at more than ever before. I don't even think that 50 years ago, we really knew what stack effect was because it didn't really even matter. Houses breathed and maybe HVAC did struggle to keep up at times, right? The house was letting all this air in and air conditioners were like an eight cylinder motor in a vehicle. They were just chugging along and utility bills were low anyway, so it didn't matter. But now that we've gotten to a point where homes are built very tight, meaning they don't breathe that well, very well insulated. We're seeing HVAC systems short cycle, which brings its own challenges that we're going to talk about in just a moment. We're seeing indoor air quality issues that we've never seen before. And we're even seeing humidity issues causing things like mold and all kinds of other issues. Is a lower electric bill a good thing? Well, of course, but does it bring some challenges Yes. Should we encapsulate our crawl space? Should we add more insulation to our homes? Should we want double pane windows? Yes. I think all of those things, if done correctly, are good things. But again, they all bring their own challenges. So let's dive into the five things I think you should be most concerned about. But before we do, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. And in return, I will do my best to reply to every comment left on this video. So here's the five things I think you should be concerned about. Number one is whether things are being done properly by your HVAC company, such as proper load calculations and sizing. Are they doing a manual J, a manual D, a manual S, and a lot of the other calculations that we're looking at today? And if these things aren't being done or you're not quite sure if they're being done correctly, maybe even paying a little extra money and making sure things are being done correctly. Some of these things are not just a matter of whether or not your electric bill is going to be lower, but it also affects the health of your family. If you've got a system that's oversized and it's short cycling and it's not removing enough humidity from the house, you are opening the door to an array of things such as mold and mildew and other types of things that can cause breathing issues with your family. So making sure the calculations are being done correctly. And if not at bare minimum, even if you have to pay for it, have a company do a proper heat load calculation. And I start with that one because I think as we move forward in the rest of our list, unless you start there and lay a good foundation, knowing that the system is sized correctly, a lot of the other things that I'm going to go through in just a moment, I don't want to say that they don't matter, but they matter a little less because you're already going to have challenges. You already already have a system that's not removing enough moisture or it's short cycling or it's not being maintained properly. Whatever the case, making sure you've got an HVAC company that maybe they're not the cheap guy, but they are the guy that's going to do it right. And they understand that homes today have challenges, challenges that they need to be monitoring. You can't just throw a system in there. Larger, the better. It means it's going to run and it's going to reach temperature and shut off and stop eating up electricity. No, no, that causes problems. And that leads me right into number two, and that is humidity. I think humidity is probably, if not the biggest issue in all of this, it's definitely in the top three. Because you've got homes that are built very tight, they're not breathing very well, and you've got heating and air systems just being installed willy-nilly. They're not being installed properly. They're not being sized properly, and that creates this whole vacuum of problems. And depending on what part of the country you're in, humidity is a bigger problem than others, right? So if you live in a dry area, then maybe sizing that system isn't quite as a challenge or as paramount as if you live in a very hot and humid area. And you might say, well, Josh, why should I care about humidity? I just want to heat and cool my home. I just want to be comfortable. And I just want that system to run as little as possible. I would say, okay, got it. But number one, are we talking about health issues? Yes. But we're also talking about comfort here. If you've got a home that the humidity is super high or super low, that also affects your comfort. Think about it. If it's a 
cold day and it's very humid, you have that clammy feeling. You're not super comfortable. Just like a hot, humid day, you can have a very low temperature in there. It could say 70 degrees on the thermostat and it not feel like 70 degrees because of how humid it is in there. And if you've got to install extra equipment to affect the humidity, to remove or add to the humidity levels, or even if you don't have to install that stuff, I think monitoring the humidity at the very least should be something that you should do. It's something you should be concerned about. It'll affect your comfort and the air you're breathing. Number three, a lot of folks in our industry, they know heating and air conditioning, right? Even when you talk to a lot of the guys in our trade, you'll say, what do you do? And they'll say, well, I do HVAC or I do HVAC, right? That's the terminology. But I would even argue that a lot of the guys in our industry, even though they do the heating and air part very well, they a lot of times forget what that V means in HVAC, and that is ventilation. Not only do they forget what it means, but a lot of the guys in our industry have never even installed a ventilation product. Again, not a big problem years ago, but now it's a really big issue. And we could do a whole video on just ventilation alone. In fact, I have. Ventilation is one of the biggest things you can do in a tight home to affect the air you breathe, to make your home safer. When we're talking about things in your home like VOCs, which I think is not talked near enough about in our industry, but also when we're talking about other issues such as challenges that arise from high humidity levels, stale air, and just simply things that you should not be breathing, the biggest way to combat that is ventilation. I get pushed back on this all the time. I had a lady not long ago say to me, well, Josh, the things that I should not be breathing, the things that cause me the most problems is things outside the home. Why would I want to bring that fresh air into my home if that air is what's causing me the problems? I'm allergic to a lot of the stuff floating in that air. And I hear you. I think it needs to be done correctly. I think that air needs to be filtered and it needs to be brought in, whether it be through a dehumidifier that has the ability to bring ventilation in or an HRV, ERV, depending on what the situation is, different products out there can affect the air that's coming coming in and your energy usage, a lot of the problems that are created with having a tighter home come from having poor ventilation. There is a whole new trade, a whole group of folks running around this country doing different things like encapsulating crawl spaces, making homes tighter than ever, which again is not a bad thing, but they're not even considering adding ventilation. They're not looking at some of the challenges that they are actually creating by doing things like encapsulating crawl spaces. I had a customer not long ago tell me that he paid to have the crawl space encapsulated and he couldn't even live in his home for over a year because of the headaches and the scratchy throat and all the other problems he was having. And it wasn't until he actually went down there and cut open those foundation vents so that the house could breathe again, that it made it bearable once again. Number four would be having someone look an expert that knows what they're looking at Look at the building envelope. Look at where the actual problems of this tight home are. And that could be done in an array of tests. There's all kinds of ways of doing that. There's blower door tests, there's thermal imaging. There's all kinds of ways that these folks can look for the issues you're having in your home. But if you are looking at things like the proper sizing of the HVAC system, monitoring the humidity and having proper ventilation in the home, and you're still having some issues, whatever that problem is, you might want to get a pro in there of some type to look at the issues you're having with the actual building envelope. And building envelope is just a fancy way of saying the building itself and how well it keeps things from getting in or out. So not only are we talking about air, right? We're talking about the windows and doors and the openings in the home that are allowing airflow, but we're also talking about things like the insulation. What's the shell of that home like? And depending on how it was constructed plays a role in all of that, but also these other systems that affect the envelope itself play a big role. So whether or not you do have ventilation plays a role in this, whether you have the proper ventilation in place and you're not creating positive or negative pressures in the home. I have seen homes that had efficiency issues, 
indoor air quality issues, and an array of problems, and just simply doing a proper analysis of the building envelope and doing small repairs, such as having that gap between the register and the ceiling on the top floor of the home was creating ventilation issues, was creating all kinds of problems. A lot of the problems that we're seeing in our industry now, when it comes to building envelope and some of the challenges we're talking about, have created essentially a whole nother trade. We have these folks running around calling themselves building scientists. Years ago, that trade didn't even exist. And the reason that there's a need for people that specialize in this stuff is because of some of the things we're talking about. It's because of the way that houses are now being constructed. And it's because of the challenges that heating and air guys are causing when they're not sizing things properly. A good inspection of the home by one of these building scientists or energy consultant or whatever they're calling themselves, they're going to get in there and do some tests on the home, find out what the root cause is, and sometimes recommend solutions as simple as what we're talking about. Sealing a few things, bringing in some ventilation, looking at the sizing of the heating and air system. And then finally, number five of things that I think you should look at as a homeowner of a newer home, and that is monitoring the indoor air quality. There's all kinds of products out there today. There's these machines that can literally test the air. I'm going to put a link to one of them down below that I have personally used, but whether it's this one or there's products on the market that you can install in the ductwork. At my heating and air company, we were a Daikin dealer and they had the Daikin air monitor that can install right in the ductwork and give you real-time readings of different indoor air quality tests that it was doing real-time. Please note that Daikin has sponsored some of our content on our YouTube channel and the FTC requires that I say so. Take a moment and monitor that indoor air quality. What do those readings look like? And what are some products you can install to alleviate those issues? I think that this is a game changer because heating and air guys for years have been recommending filtration or ventilation or air cleaning products, whatever those products were that they were recommending. And now you as the homeowner can see real time is this affecting the problem I'm having? You can see, hey, I have a high particulate count. We've installed this filter. Did it actually fix the problem? And you'll be able to see real time. Did it actually fix the issue? So that's my five. Let me know your thoughts. Leave me a comment down below. Did I miss something that you think should be addressed with tighter homes? Or are you going to address something in your home after hearing these five concerns with tight homes. I'd love to hear about that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about eight secrets on brand selection HVAC contractors don't want you to know. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.